Hey, what's up? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, helping you guys with tips and tricks to mix better live events. Today, we're going to talk about subgroups. I think they're one of the most chronically misunderstood or underused features on digital mixers by sort of newer mixing engineers, newer sound engineers. And I think in the past on analog consoles, perhaps they got a little more exposure because the faders are right there on the console. It's kind of hard to ignore them. You look at the console and you go, hey, what's a subgroup? Whereas in digital mixers, you need to set them up a bit. In this video, we're going to talk about what exactly subgroups are when compared to DCAs, which I think people are a little more familiar with, why we would use them and what we can use them for. And finally, we'll just have a little tutorial on how you would set them up and I'll show you on an M32 mixer. The way you set it up is going to be different for each mixer. It's something that you need to learn how to figure out by yourself, unfortunately. Before we dive into that, I have something for you to help you get going and get better mixes quicker and that is my three-step EQ guide. Using this guide you can just really quickly learn the steps to getting EQ dialed in for just about anything. You can find that at offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ but there's also a link in the description down below this video. Now without further ado let's dive in. Isn't a DCA just a subgroup and isn't a subgroup just a DCA? I hear you cry. They're totally different. And when it comes down to it, from my perspective, the main difference is that audio that is passed to a subgroup can be processed. A DCA is, it stands for a digital control amplifier, right? And what it means basically is that it's sort of like a remote control. It's like instructions to the faders that you have assigned to it to raise or lower the level. Basically, when you pull the DCA down, it's a, it's a message going to the channels that are in that DCA saying, okay, we're turning the volume down now. Whereas a subgroup is like a bus. It's a destination where you send audio. And once that audio goes there, it can be manipulated and processed in different ways. Although with a DCA, you can manipulate the volume of the signals that you assign to it, you can't actually route those signals to any other outputs other than the outputs that they are originally routed to. And you certainly can't apply any other processing to them. Their functionality is strictly limited to volume control of existing channels. So a common analogy that's used for like understanding electrical current is this like water pipe system, right? Like water flowing through pipes. And I think it's really good for visualizing groups as well. If you have your main mix and that is a pipe full of water flowing to a destination, right? You can tap into that stream. If you attached another pipe, then the water would flow into that pipe. You could send the water into that pipe as well as your original pipe, and it could come to two different destinations. Or for example, you could separate some of the flow of the water with the secondary pipe, that's your subgroups. And then you could feed it to another reservoir where you added strawberry flavoring to the water for some reason. And then you have your main mix, your main pipeline, which is plain water. And then you have your strawberry pipeline, which is your strawberry group with strawberry flavored water. And you could give different people the strawberry water than you give the plain flavored water. Or if you're feeling really crazy, you could mix a prescribed amount of your strawberry water back into the mainstream. It tastes like, like strawberries. A DCA is more like a foreman in a plant standing by the taps saying, open the taps, close the taps. He has no strawberry powers. So why do we use groups? When you're dealing with a large number of signals that can sort of be grouped into one entity, you may want to apply processing to them together. For example, drums or vocals or guitars. You may want to apply reverb to all of the vocals equally using one send from your group. Or you may want to compress your drum group as a whole instead of individually compressing each channel differently because you get different results when you do it that way. You could also use the group for parallel processing. You could do parallel compression on your drums by compressing your main drums in your main mix and then also compressing a group of drums and mixing them together. I have a whole video on parallel compression. I'll link to that down below. Another option for groups is that you could just divide all of your inputs into these groups and remove them from the main mix and only mix on these groups. So you sort of do the fine level mixing with your faders and then similar to DCAs, you would use your groups to adjust the levels during the mix, but with the addition of group level processing. You could also do the opposite of that. You could create your whole main mix with just your channel faders. And then you could also create groups of these channel types and you could use those groups to mix something like a recording. 
So you have, for example, on your mixer, on your left side, all of your faders, which you're using to mix front of house. And then on the right side, you have all your groups, which you are using to mix to broadcast or a recording. Think about that for just a minute. When you're mixing in a smaller, medium sized venue, there's a lot of sound that comes off of the stage from drum kits, amplifiers, physical horns on brass instruments. And if you were to take just a direct out of the main mix, you might find that you haven't reinforced certain elements of the mix as much as others. In a small venue, you really don't need that much snare drum to fill the room because you've already got tons of snare drum. You might end up taking it quite low in your mix and that can give you an unbalanced recording if you take the recording from the master bus. If you're using groups, you can rebalance these elements in your recording or even better, you can send them collectively to a matrix and you could, for example, be recording your main outputs, but also use the matrix sense of your group to supplement that recording output, that recording matrix. It's a little more advanced, but it's certainly an option. But the caveat here is that on some mixers, for example, the Midas M32, Behringer X32, you need to sacrifice your mix buses, your auxiliary sends to create these groups. So if you're in the mood for say, four stereo groups, then you've already lost half of your sends. And if you're using the recommended four sends for effects on those mixtures as well, you're down to four sends left for something like monitors, which on a small stage is fine, but on a larger stage, that's not really very helpful. And this is just one of the reasons why you tend to see these mixers in smaller venue. When you get to these higher requirements, that's the sort of things you're looking for. But enough theory, let's have a look at the M32 mixer and see how we set up and assign two groups on that mixer at least. So let me just give you a quick tutorial on how you would set up groups on this mixer. So Midas M32 or uh, Behringer X32. As discussed, you have to sacrifice some of your mix buses to do this, which is not ideal, but it's something you gotta think about. If you know you need six mix buses for monitors, maybe you only have space for a certain number of groups, right? We have 16 buses here, but four of them are for effects as standard, you can change these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to set up the groups and you decide yourself what you can afford to lose of your mix buses, your auxiliary sends, let's call them as well. I have here a standard preset that I have made for bands. You can download this preset in the description underneath this video. So check that out if that's of interest to you. It's just set up for a starting point for us, lots of bands, a sort of, it's sort of my catch all, check it out. So you see, on my first channels here, I have a lot of drums. I've got them set up as a sort of catch-all preset. It goes all the way up to channel 12 with percussion, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stereo drum bus, right? I select bus one here and I go over to configuration. And then I use this dial to scroll down to subgroup. And then I just click assign. It tells me it'll configure the pair. So you can only configure these in pairs from mix buses to subgroups. So I'm going to confirm and I'm also going to link the two channels because I want it to be a stereo drum bus, right? I just send my drums to this mix as I would normally. So I'll go back to my first input layer. I've selected my bus, I'll hit fader flip and I'll just shove everything up because this is all drums, right? I'll go to my second fader first four are drums and percussion, so they all to go up to zero. Sense the subgroup post fader. So what this means now is that when I am mixing my drums, this mix that I create here is going to my drum bus. Let's color that to make it obvious. It's purple now, right? And I'll just move through my sort of main groups. What's the next thing that's up? It's acoustic guitars and guitar. Sounds great. So we'll go back here again. Remember, select home configuration and down here we select subgroup and we're changing the pair. Now again, it doesn't always need to be stereo. Maybe I'm not fussed about preserving my panning information. Whether you pan or not live, I don't tend to do very much panning for various reasons. I'll get into another point. But whether you preserve your panning is up to you. But for example, I'm just going to make a mono guitar bus. So I just do the exact same thing. I select my new guitar bus. We'll color it. We'll color it yellow just so that we know which one's the guitar bus. I'll select it, fader flip, and I find my acoustic guitar and my guitars. And they're also going up to zero. Check over here. Don't need any more. My next one could be pianos. Same process. 
Of course, if you know how many buses you want in the beginning, you just do them all, right? So if I want eight buses and I know that I only want one stereo bus and six mono buses, I just go through and I will select the buses and change them to subgroups. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If you want to use these subgroups to mix, as in you want the audio to go from your drum channels into this bus and then out to the speakers, you need to do two things. You need to remember to remove these channels from your main stereo mix, all of them. And then you need to select your bus and you need to send that bus to the stereo mix. So now these channels don't go to the master fader. They go to this drum bus, this drum group that we've created, and then they move on to the master fader afterwards. Now, what's really cool about this actually is that you could leave all of your drum channels going out to your master bus, but you could also send them to the drum group and send that to your master bus. But you could use this as parallel effects, parallel compression. Select your, so I've still got a fader flip on here. Select your drum group, get your compressor, smash it, and then just dial it in to taste. I've got a whole video on parallel compression if you're interested in that. But these are really flexible. Once you set all of your channels up, and I recommend you do set them all up in a preset, you have, you know, your drums, your guitars, your pianos, brass, whatever you want in your groups. And then you are able to send these where you want them to. You could, for example, if you were simultaneously mixing a stream, you could keep these faders going to your main output, but not send the groups to your main output. And then you have the possibility to use the groups to mix the broadcast. Alternatively, you could keep them going to your main output, but you now have control using the sends on the groups. You can send to the matrices, which means that you can control, for example, what goes in to your front fills if you have them. You might not want to add bass or kick drum to your front fills. So you can decide that maybe you only want to send your guitar so let's summarize. Groups are places to gather and process signals together, and you can then send them on to any other place, whether that's rejoining the main mix or to a whole other destination. They are not like DCAs because they have more control than simply volume. You can also process and reroute the audio. You might consider them for parallel compression or effects or creating a separate mix for streaming, broadcast, that sort of thing. Sometimes you have to sacrifice buses to create groups and that can vary from mixer to mixer. So your best shot of setting them up is to read the manual for your mixer and find out exactly how to set up subgroups. But if you just want to get down to the nitty gritty of making the best mix you can, then I recommend you check out my three-step formula for better EQ. You can visit offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or you can click the link in the description down below. Please like the video if you found this helpful and subscribe subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more than that. Apparently liking and subscribing is super helpful to creators nowadays. For now, that's all from me and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye.